Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, Bone Bootcamp with Sarah Purcell. I'm your host, Sarah. This podcast, my newsletter, and all of my programs are designed to help women approach aging with confidence and courage. I'm specifically focused on bone growth promotion and skeleton safe movements in Bone Bootcamp, the course, and Short and Sweet with Sarah, the membership. In this podcast, I strive to bring you all the most current information on living your best life as you age. Let's get on with today's episode. So, yep, this is episode number one. I started this podcast because I have a message that I really want to share with women who are like me. What is being like me? Well, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis in... 2016. I was shocked and horrified and really I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that I was a movement teacher, yet I had osteoporosis. I wondered with some fear, do I have brittle bones? Is this all an illusion that I seem to be fit, but I'm actually not? So what did I do? I set my mindset first. I knew I couldn't move into dealing with osteoporosis, and it's funny I use the word move, (laughs) I couldn't go into dealing with this diagnosis with the fear mindset. That's something I knew right from the start. So mindset is huge, and that's part of why I'm here, because I do want to say to everybody, you can do this. A diagnosis isn't the end. A diagnosis is just the beginning and you can leave it behind you. You can leave it behind you and it informs you and it makes you stronger, but it doesn't define you. So that's my theme. And then we can talk about my story and how I got here. So I'll start with the fact that there I was with this diagnosis in 2016. And I committed to having a curious mindset and saying, isn't there something else other than the drugs that my doctor offered me? I had read the New York Times article that scared a lot of people about side effects, spontaneous breaks. It's not that everyone has them. It's a small subset. But with long-term use of biophosphonates, for instance, there is an issue with spontaneous breaks and there are other issues with other drugs. And my go-to is always to say, what can I do myself that doesn't involve pharmaceuticals? Let's see if I can take care of this myself before going to the route of pharmaceuticals. It's just my personal preference. So when I say like me, I'm speaking to people who maybe are like me and want to seek out a more natural solution And I laugh sometimes and say, I didn't seek out a hocus pocus solution. I didn't start wearing magnets. I didn't start dancing. I didn't start having seances. I looked at just some key elements of my health, things that really pertain to graceful, healthy aging in general. So alas, there's the aha. People like me are really anybody who wants to age gracefully. So let's dive in. The first thing that I did was I took a look at my gut health. I had done enough reading to understand that I might not have even been absorbing the nutrients I was taking in. At that time, I was taking in most of my calcium from supplements. I have since changed that and I get it mostly from food because there is a little link. Um, There's a great Harvard medical study, medical journal that talks about the study that showed the link between heart disease, and calcium supplementation. I'll link that in the show notes. So nonetheless, whether I was, whichever way I was getting my calcium, there's nothing to say that I was actually absorbing it well. And the same thing is true for all the other necessary components, whether it's vitamin D, um, the omega-3s, the uh, magnesium, boron, um, copper and zinc. There's a lot going on. And was I actually absorbing what I was trying to take in? Well, I now know that I probably wasn't. I thought I was a healthy eater and I'm sorry, first distraction, first podcast, a little boo-boo. Hope you roll with me through that. So I probably wasn't absorbing what I thought I was giving myself. 
And I know that because I did deal with, and I'm just going to broach the subject a little postmenopausal constipation and some irritability, you know, bloating or gas. Guess what? I started healing my gut by just diving into changing what I ate. Basically, I wanted to get everything into my body that came out of the earth or had a mother and father. So if you look at it that way, it's really pretty simple. It means not the middle aisles of the grocery store. And sometimes that's pretty hard for me and my sisters, in fact, we're cracker eaters. We love crackers. I have gone to gluten-free crackers and I have really, really taken them down to the level of a treat. So for some people, sugar might be more involved in their treat. And there have been times when that's been my treat. Right now, it's a little bit of a really good gluten-free cracker. Just makes me feel so happy. So whatever it is, don't deny yourself everything. But let's shop on the outside of the aisles of a grocery store. And if you have a way through farmer's markets to get yourself closer to the farm with your choices, kudos to you. It's awesome. So that's number one in the gut health area. Number two is probiotics. I started out taking a probiotic that you get at the store and I got one that was refrigerated because I had read that you really needed to keep it alive. I then became frustrated with how do I really know what's good, what's not good? Am I getting enough variety of good bacteria in my gut through these probiotics? So I started making my own. I got a mother from a friend and make kombucha. So a mother is sort of like the sourdough starter, but it's the starter for kombucha. You can get it from a friend. You can also buy them online and someone will ship them to you. It's not hard to make kombucha. It's really pretty easy. Tea and a tiny, tiny bit of sugar. I have figured out how to get a recipe that says a half a cup of sugar for a jug of tea down to about a tablespoon or less. So you don't really need all that sugar. And we know that sugar kind of takes away the good effects of adding all this good bacteria anyway because bad bacteria thrives on sugar. So I also have a lovely husband who makes me fantastic sauerkraut. He uses red cabbage and ginger and a little bit of beets and it is good. I take a tablespoon a day. So all of my gastrointestinal issues have cleared up. I really feel pretty confident and my blood work shows that I really am getting the benefits of the good things that I'm taking in, whether it's supplements or whole foods. The next thing was I looked into my alignment and wouldn't you know it, I really wasn't loading my hips, for instance, the way I thought I was when I was walking. I was walking with a lifted rib cage. And for those of you watching the video, I'm showing you what happens to my torso when I lift that rib cage. And you can feel down into your low back, if you do the same thing that I am, you can feel an increased curve. So was gravity coming right down through the center of my body and ending up in my low back instead of loading my hip? Probably. So alignment is a huge thing. It's something that I work on with all of my private clients and in my programs. So I did fail to mention at the beginning my programs, Bone Boot Camp and Short and Sweet with Sarah, but it probably will be in the intro and the outro. So you'll have a chance to look into those. So after taking a look at my alignment and my gut health, the next thing was sleep. Was I getting enough sleep? Was I getting good sleep? And the, why would you think that you would need sleep for your bones? Well, it turns out research has shown that we really need sleep for all of our metabolic processes, all of the things that go on in our body. Dr. Matthew Walker has a fabulous book, Why We Sleep. He's been a guest on many podcasts. It would be my dream to have him one day. And he shows us that in layman's terms, the way I'll describe it is that when you are in sleep, when you're in your deepest level of sleep, your deep REM sleep, your brain is doing its repair process. It's basically doing house cleaning and it's also locking in memories, throws out the garbage, 
and locks in memories as what, and things you've learned. For instance, we know that athletes who learn a new skill, it has been shown in the lab that they will retain that skill and actually be better at it the next day if they've had a good night's sleep. So you're really locking in and in your sleep, you're actually improving. So what, that thing that we know about the brain we can extrapolate, and there have been some studies that have shown that it really pertains to all the processes in our body. So as we're sleeping, our body is throwing out the trash and building more to the structure. And the same can be said of our bones. So get your sleep is not just a throwaway comment. It really is true. Bone building is happening in your deep sleep. It's happening because of some things. And one is that you're getting the nutrients you need to build the bone. And the other is my final pillar, and that is weight-bearing exercise. So that is where my area of expertise really comes into play. And I started a program based on my research, and my research was based largely on the Lift More protocol out of Australia, but on other studies as well. But the protocol itself is something that I took and adapted for home use. The protocol uses very heavy lifting, people lifting to their one rep max. And what that means is you are 80% of their one rep max. I I need to correct that, 80% of your one rep max. That means what is, for, for instance, let's say you're doing an overhead press. What is the thing you can press overhead in good form only once. You can't do any more. It's just like, it's not gonna happen. That's your one rep max. And let's say that was 20 pounds. Then what I'm gonna do is take 80% of 20 pounds and that's gonna be my workout rate, weight. And I'm going to hope to do it at least eight times and three sets of that. Then maybe I start doing it nine. And so you can see that I would build up my repetitions with good form, and then I would go to another weight. And there are a whole lot of other variables you can play with, but that's the basic idea. I just take it, really ramp it way down from 80% of your one rep max for home use with the acknowledgement that you may not have supervision. So there's a lot of training on your alignment And you learn how to start with things you have around the house, just a can of soup or a resistance band. The idea is that the Lift More protocol told us what sites we need to be giving the load to. And the load is the weight. And it's the weight with gravity coming down upon it, going down into the earth. And it's that ground reaction force that really puts that weight bearing load in there. So I know it sounds complicated, but it's really simple. If you lift weights, you are increasing the amount of gravity that is bearing down on your bones. That's all there is to it. Lift weights and your bones are going to adapt and build more bone. So of course you need the nutrients in order for your body to do that. And you need some sleep in order for your body to do that. And working my way backwards, the best thing of all is having the mindset that doing just one little thing, you don't have to do a whole weightlifting program. You don't even have to do a weightlifting program. You could start with core strength and stability, and you might choose one three minute exercise a day. That's where I think mindset comes in. You have to find things that you enjoy, that you want to do, that you will do consistently. So way better to consistently stretch your calves and do that all sprinkled all throughout the day than to give yourself a huge weightlifting program that you're never going to do. So small steps have a mindset that it's doable. And what's the one thing you can do tomorrow that'll help improve your health? And those things, those categories that I gave you, they actually pertain to aging gracefully, aging optimally with movement so that it's not just your lifespan we're looking at, but your health span. How long are you active, happy, and healthy? That's what we all want. I'm assuming that you're like me and that's what you want.
So I hope you enjoyed my little intro conversation and you'll come back to see me interview guests and just have a really good time pulling together guests from every one of these pillars that I think are so important. So thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Bone Bootcamp podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're loving the podcast, please subscribe. Also, share with a friend. I would really appreciate it. And if you're inspired, a really helpful thing to do is leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. Thank you again for joining me. See you in the next episode.